Hello, and welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Janice Hamilton, and I will be your host today. Today, we will be speaking with an artist who I have known for quite some time, so obviously, I'm excited about this. But first, let's meet our panelists for today. Juliana Ferrero is an independent arts professional, currently working as curator for the city of Pompano Beach, managing the exhibitions for Bailey Contemporary Art, the Pompano Beach Cultural Center, and the historic Alley Cultural Arts. Alberto Acevedo, did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is a teacher at the Arthur and Polly Mays Conservatory of the Arts. And Bill Hirschman is an art journalist and founder of FloridaTheaterOnStage.com. Our guest today is known as the Painter of Thoughts. Her name is Susan Clifton. Welcome, Susan. Thanks for having me. I know you're from my hometown, yes, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Opposing schools, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Susan, uh, tell us, you, you started out, I understand, in a different art form, as a dancer. I started so, out as a dancer as a child, around, this, around eight. But I was always, always sketching and painting. And so how did you get from being a, a dancer, uh, with the phases, I think, uh, working for various people to the point where you made a decision to become an artist, a commercial artist? Well, I, I think, you know, throughout my whole childhood, you know, like I said, they were uh, sort of alongside each other. There was always the dance, there was always the art, and everybody, and trying to make up my mind what I was going to do in college. And then I decided to go to art college, and I uh, still wanted to be a dancer. So I moved to New York City to be a dancer, and I ended up in advertising. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so you know, that was sort of an accident, but it was a happy accident. And <clears throat> I was surrounded by creative people. I was working with the finest photographers in this city who really trained my eye uh, in composition. So even though I was in art college and studying composition there, now I'm, I'm learning it from the masters so to speak, you know, Richard Avedon, Francesco Scavullo. I mean, yeah. these, these were like the best photographers of that time. And, um, you know, I, I like, was like, pinch me every day. How did I get so lucky to fall into this career? And I was still painting on the side, but it was not something that I was doing very seriously. I was not exhibiting and uh, I was just concentrating on my commercial career at that time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I know your your even your art when you finally chose art over dance, I know you still <laughs> tap dance. Yes. <laughs> um, but w you had a progression of subject matter as well. Tell us about that. Well, in the early days, like when I was in New York, I was doing mostly abstracts and uh, and a sl sort of pop arty kind of stuff, um, but very abstract, flat color. And then w when I moved to South Florida and I started. Um, really taking it more seriously. I started out with flowers and I was working on technique a lot and color and, and very large flowers. And then I evolved into um, uh, fabric mosaic. I had gotten this idea because I got the uh, grant to do a show called Art Aquatic. And I used fabric as the background to so show movement in the water <laughs> and I created the fabric myself and then I did a flamingo for a deck of cards called Art in Hand the USA project and so I did another bird um, and again it was fabric mosaic but instead of painting the the animal and doing the fabric mosaic in the background I flipped it and painted the background and had um, the animal created with the fabric and then one day I realized I could put anything I want on this fabric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had been working on pos being more positive in my own life. And, and I also saw that this was like a trend that was going on. A lot of people were thinking about, you know, we have to be more positive for, to have a better life. And so I decided to put these thoughts on the fabric and to create, I started out with human bodies and then evolved into hands. 
Today we will be showing you a lot of Susan's work. But first, let's take a look at this short video clip where Susan will demonstrate the process she goes through in creating her mosaic works. Hi, I'm Susan Clifton. I'm a South Florida artist. I'm a painter of thoughts and feelings. In my Gray Matter series, the figure is made up of fabric with thoughts and feelings printed on it. I have the fabric printed for me in different shades of gray, and then I cut up the fabric using a fabric wheel and painstakingly place each piece on the, on the canvas to create the figure, the hand, or whatever the subject is that I'm doing. Last year, I started doing hand gestures in, in the Gray Matter series with a stark white background. In this particular one called Peace, it's not global peace I'm talking about, it's peace within. It's the contentment within, it's the living in the moment, and I'm hoping that, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is if, if we all could find this peace within ourselves, then the world will be a more peaceful place. I've been wanting to see that, by the way, <laughs> that, that process. So uh, when you approach a project, do you have that word in mind? Are you commissioned to do these pieces for specific projects? Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm commissioned. Uh, I just finished a piece called Equality that is going to be in the Equality Florida auction in November, um, a fundraiser. And um, but most of the time it's just me coming up with sometimes uh, you know I pick from my life you know something comes up in life and then I think I start doing research what kind of hand symbol would that be and so then I do a little bit more research to find like some thoughts that would real or affirmations and kind of piece it all together like a puzzle <laughs> and then um, also have to come up with the idea how I can get some color into it because I'm all about color I love color um, I have a question about the text. I mean, you say mm -hmm. you have affirmations, but um, do you have the quotes from uh, poets or what other type of text? Because there's a lot of written material in your yes. paintings. I try to stay away from anything that might be copyright material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smart. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I do some research on online. Usually um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of my quotes from Instagram. Um, and, so, and I usually change it around. A lot of times it's in third person and I switch it into first person. Okay. So. I, I know that on the equality piece you shared with me that you're using Harvey Milk's quote, quote which yeah. is so apropos. Mm. Wow. Um, and uh, you're working on a, a present project right now? I have this idea of doing like the pinky swear <laughs> and I want to call it uh, Promise. And I have not found oh, wow. the quotes yet for that, and but mm -hmm. that's what I'm working on this week. I'll be doing a photograph and planning that and starting it next How week. What goes into one of these? What, mm -hmm. what kind of preparation do you do? How much of it is instinctive? How much of it is, is very carefully worked out? It's very carefully worked out. I, I'm not one of those artists that just walks up to a blank canvas and starts painting. You know, um, I use today's technologies. In what way? Um, I use Photoshop. I use a camera. You know, I I use the internet to find my quotes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm I'm really immersed in like digital as well, but to make uh, something handmade. And so. Um, and three dimensional. Something yeah. with texture. Yeah, it has a lot of texture. So um, what I'm where I'm starting is usually in the Photoshop stage. Like once I come up with the idea, mm -hmm. I then go into Photoshop because I have to sort of put it all together, the photograph that I've taken, you know, introducing the color, and then um, I have to create that fabric. So I do like uh, six shades of gray with my words, and then I send it off to be printed. So a lot of it is done on the computer first. It's about, you know, a week's worth of work right there, and then, um, then I transfer the idea onto the canvas, and I do the painting part first, and then I start with the fabric, which is the painful part. That's the final step. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the part that takes the longest. Well, we have another video 
and this video was taken when Susan was exhibiting her Grey Matter collection. Let's take a look at that. This is my show called Grey Matter. It was born out of the idea of our thoughts create our reality. Each painting has the thoughts of the subject printed on fabric, and then the fabric is cut up and applied to the canvas, that, and that creates the figure. When I start a painting, I always start with the, uh, the actual acrylic part first, you know, painting all of those areas, leaving the body blank. And then um, I start, you know, sketching out like the shadow areas, the highlight areas, and then uh, the, the real tricky part, the challenging part is you know, really defining the muscles and putting, uh, you know, those highlights and those shadows in, you know, the right places so that the body really comes to life. This work touches on subjects like joyfulness, inspiration, and worthiness. And I hope that with this work that I can inspire people to stay more positive and to improve their lives. I can see some of the dance inspiration. <laughs> in yes. some of your pieces and your, your, your anatomy is incredible. Thank you. Uh, I, I like to work with um, photographs of dancers because of the muscle tone in their bodies. And I was very fortunate to um, find a, a photographer online who I then spoke with and he gave me permission to use many of his images. Mm -hmm. Of course, by the time I finished with them, he hardly recognizes them. but. Um, but I had something to work with without having to photograph dancers myself. And uh, so there are a lot of dancers in my, yeah, uh, in sure. my work. I find it so fascinating that, um, that you've taken inspiration from so many different parts of your life. Because mm -hmm. to me, I look at your work and it's somewhat theatrical. There seems okay. to be, it's almost like you're watching a little play. There's a message to it. Mm -hmm. There's so much to see in it. I mean, mm -hmm. well, uh, that's what I'm taking from it as, as the viewer. Um, what, what influences do you think have affected you? Do you think that the area that you're living in here in South Florida now, I know the art scene here has exploded in the last few years, especially since the 1980s. Um, do you, how do you see that uh, environment changing? And is it affecting your work in any way? I think it definitely uh, affects my work. Uh, when I first started really exhibiting um, about 15 years ago, here in Broward County, the, the cultural division, the, um, some of the organizations that I belong to, the networking opportunities, it really helped to, it helped me evolve because of the community of artists that I was in. I'm in a mastermind group um, it's called South Florida Artists Association Mastermind Group. And those artists inspire me. And my work evolved because of that co those conversations. Um, the exhibit opportunities, the grant opportunities, all of these things um, really helped me, you know, bring my work to where it is today. And in turn, your work is influencing, I'm sure, a bunch of young artists mm -hmm. that are coming up what would you say to those young artists who are, who are now emerging or who are starting out? Well, first of all, they, they really need to participate in as many ex exhibitions as possible. You know, there, there are lots of organizations that they can join, um, but they should also try to join like a mastermind group like I'm in because we share I, not, not just ideas, but art marketing ideas and, and ways to get our work out there. The internet is, is great, but if you don't know how to use it properly, then uh, you're lost, you know? So it's, uh, it's not just um, being alone in your studio working. You have to be part of the community. Yeah. I think it's very important. Related to community, and you mentioned studio, so um, I know you through <laughs> Bailey Contemporary Arts, and you reach um, a year into your artist in residence program. So I'm curious to know how that experience of having a studio in a community center um, has influenced wow, your that, creative process. This past year has just been amazing because of it. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was one of those artists that was just in my home studio in, in this living in this vacuum, except you know, except when I during exhibitions or my mastermind group, mm -hmm. but um, now I'm in a studio where I'm, I'm 
the public is able to come in and talk to me w mm. while I'm working, which has made such a difference to me. They bring me ideas, hmm. you wow. know. Wow, that's great. So, and I also had a wonderful uh, solo show this past summer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was that brought me a lot of press and just a lot of recognition locally. I was very pleased. So, where are you going from here? Are you are you going to expand? The, the hands, are you going to work in, uh, continue your mosaic work? Oh, for sure, the mosaic work is it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stay with that. And um, whether or not I'm gonna continue with the hands, I'm not really sure. I'm already thinking of other, other ideas. I'm gonna start experimenting in the next couple of months with some, you know, taking that same idea, but in a different way, maybe a more abstract way. Um, and maybe even doing a few more bodies again. Your bodies are wonderful. Yes, I, I'm thinking maybe it's yes, doing that they're again. lovely. Thank you. Um, and I, I noticed in the equality piece, uh, you had incorporated the rainbow, the rainbow behind. Right. The rainbow colors. <laughs> and that was sort of a throwback to my flowers. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You have some more examples of her work that we yes. can show? Yes, yeah. there there's a go. gorgeous one. Oh, that's lovely. And what? that. What, what inspires you? Is there something that catches your imagination that you go, oh my gosh, I've got to do this? Well, that, that one that they just showed actually was a friend was in Costa Rica at a yoga uh, retreat and she sent me this picture because she's, um, her computer was um, crashed and she said, please save this picture for me. <laughs> and I said, can I use it? <laughs> and she said, <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I just, I silhouetted her and then I created the background myself. And coincidentally, she comes to me and she says, why did you put that background? Because uh -huh. every day when I meditated there, that's what I visualized. Wow. So it was almost wow. like she sent me the message, you know, I, I don't know. It just it sort of came to me and, but she was blown away when she saw it because. I'm, I'm curious that when you look back on your time in the advertising Mm -hmm. world. Do you ever sometimes wonder, I, I sort of wish I got into this earlier, this phase of your life? And if so, how do you think about that? Or do you think about that? I, I thought about that a couple of times, but the answer is always like, no, because Why? this came at the right time. There's always a time and a place in your life, you know? And if I was doing this earlier, my, the work would be completely different. I wouldn't be doing this because you know, this is what's being talked about now. Well, is there a lesson there? I, I'm, I'm always, when we have people on, we have people watching that think, oh gosh, I'd like to do this. Is there like a piece of advice you wish you could go back to yourself five years ago, 10 years ago, and shake you and go, I want you to know this. If there are people out there that are looking for similar shaking, what would you tell them? <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's always the right time, you know? If you're, whatever you're doing in your life right now is probably what you're supposed to be doing, you know? And if, but, but if you're that unhappy, then maybe, you know, look inside and see what can be changed. Because, you know, I have to say, I have had a really good life and I've been happy through most of it. With the work that I was doing, I got to be creative my entire adult life. Um, maybe it wasn't always this kind of creativity, but it was still a amazing work. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I can't look back and say, I should have done this sooner. I would have had more time to be, you know, um, successful, but maybe I wouldn't have been, maybe I never would have done this work, which I think is so important. So well, I've, I've met many artists who are such purists. They only want to paint. And I, I, I commend you because you've done illustrative work. You've also mm -hmm. done um, website design, mm -hmm. which, of course, you know, bread and butter jobs that, uh, that artists. Yeah. But they're also fun and they're also creative. So, you know, I think an artist needs to still, when they're in the commercial world, they still have to have some kind of art that is their own, you know? Because in the commercial world, you're doing this for somebody else. Right. And they're telling you how to be creative, you know. And that artist really needs to have something that they can call their own. Right. And so that's why I continued to paint. 
Do you find that the political climate these days is giving you more <laughs> ammunition? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to stay away from the politics. Okay. Um, I, the closest one I have to it is the one called Truth. Uh -huh. um, but I, I, people wanted me to get involved in the Me Too, you know. Um, I just see that all of that as something negative. I'm trying to be positive here, you know. So I'm just going to continue doing things for that are more personal and stay away from the political. Mm -hmm. And everyone can relate to those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fine. You know, something we struggle with at, um, at our school and with my students is how to take the artist and infuse business into it so that you can mm -hmm. make a living and still do your art. How have you been able to do that? How have you been able to be a successful artist and still put food on the table and still li uh, live a life? Because mm, life is expensive. Oh, well, she's married. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> yes, I am married. Yes. <laughs> but um, I still have to put you know, some food on the table. Yeah. So um, yeah, I still do commercial projects. Um, I, I have certain days of the week that I still do commercial projects and certain days that I'm mm -hmm. at the studio. I try to get over to the studio. I work harder at this time in my life than <laughs> I've ever worked in my life because I'm working six days a week wow. instead of five. And, um, but I'm doing what I love, so, you know. And I'm, since being at Bali, at Baca, I am also able to sell prints. Uh, participate in art auctions, and uh, you know, make it happen. You know. And related to that, oh, do you have something? No. So related to that, do you? I'm curious about uh, people asking you for commissions, and do you do collaborate with someone that when they ask a commission? I mean, because there's the text, there's the image, there's so much in your process. So if someone were to ask you uh, to do a commission, will you take it, and what will be the process? Yeah. I well. The recent commission was kind of similar, except that it was for an organization. Mm. So, <clears throat> but if I was going to do it for an individual, I would probably photograph their hands, you know, mm -hmm. and and ask them for their thoughts. You know, what is it that they're working on in their life? You know, mm -hmm. and I think that would be great. I know you you uh, had a commission piece for Make a Wish, the Make a Wish organization. Yeah, we did one called Hope. And it was a... <laughs> wow. well, we all need that. Yes. And, and uh, you also talked about prints, which I always like to discuss because um, artists, as a stream of revenue, as a stream of income, can now pr produce their own prints. Hmm. Is that how you do it, Susan? I do both uh, where I print my own prints, and then I also do uh, gicle on canvas, and um, usually to order. So if somebody really, really loves a painting but can't afford the original, they can have a gicle. I think that's lovely mm. because it makes art affordable right. to everyone mm -hmm. if the original is yeah. gone. And it helps the artist with more sales, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so what, uh, what, what do you have coming up? You have, that, you have the pinky one coming up. The pinky one coming up. Any, Anything else we should look out for? Well, the uh, I am currently hanging in uh, Bubbles and Pearls in Wilton Manors. The videos that you have here, and we've seen other artists who have videos, and there are websites, by the way. Do you have a website you want people to know about? SusanClifton.com. That's a hard one. <laughs> um, but I've noticed a lot of marketing these days that involve artists using video, using online. Can you talk a little bit about how, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Van Gogh didn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Might have sold more at mm -hmm. that point. What, talk a little bit about how an artist in the 21st century needs to use the, these various venues for marketing. Well, the, the web has to start with the website. Um, and being a web designer, that was the easy part for me. Um, but then there's Instagram. You know, the Instagram, Pinterest, those are the two that are like super visual that really can help uh, a young artist who's just starting out, you know, drive more traffic to their website um, and just get recognition outside of your community, especially um, Instagram, because you can use hashtags that will reach people in Europe 
I mean, it could, you could reach galleries all across the country with your Instagram account. Yeah, it, 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 it's one thing to speak to the people who know you. And one of the problems with Facebook is it's wonderful, but it's always the people you know and how to get your images out to other people. Yeah, I always say uh, Facebook is six degrees of separation. Yeah. It's like, it's either the people you know or the people who, the other people who know those people, right. you know, but people don't just like find you. Right. right. And in Instagram, they just find you. Yeah. <laughs> so you're hanging at the Baca Center right now. Are there any, are there any um, events monthly that where people can come and preview your work? There is an event on the first Friday of every month that the city of Pompano Beach does called Old Town Untapped. Oh, yeah. And um, the studios at Baca are open. I'm always there. And there's always an exhibition on the first floor, two exhibitions on the first floor. And uh, the, the event outside of the building is also quite, quite interesting with live music. And, and it's been, um, Pompano's done a lot to bring more culture to the city, and you know I'm grateful because I have a, a studio there. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. Well, Susan, thank you so much for sharing your work and your life with us. Uh, your work is truly an inspiration, and I also want to thank our panelists for being here today and sharing mm -hmm. their expertise. Spotlight on the Arts is a community program, so please feel free to contact us and let us know what you think. You can email us at spotlightonthearts at BrowardSchools.com and check out our favorite websites, floridatheateronstage.com and hamiltonartauctions.com. We encourage you to get involved in the arts. Go to the theater, go to a concert, go to a gallery. It's art, it's all good. So be good and make sure you tune in next week for another episode of Spotlight on the Arts.